Well, hello everybody out there in the print on demand universe. My name is Martin and it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to another Printify webinar. We have got a great one for you today because we are joined by Etsy superstar, Heather from Heather X Studios. And she is gonna share some pearls of wisdom with you. And it's all in the, it's all in an effort to make you a more knowledgeable, a more profitable print on demand seller. Heather, how are you doing today? Wonderful, starting off well. All right, Heather. <laughs> Wonderful, Heather. Um, well, uh, Heather is going to share uh, some of her tips and tricks, some of her, uh, uh, some of her. Uh, 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 stops and starts, and it's going to be a wonderful time, and you're going to learn a lot. And the best thing is, at the end of it all, you're going to have a live Q&A session with me and Heather, where she will answer all of your questions, okay? Or I will answer all of your questions. We'll both answer all of your questions, okay? And along the way, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to be giving away some prizes. There'll be an opportunity for you to win something at the end, okay? But for now... I would just like to invite everybody to test out that chat feature. You know how we do it. Right now, I'd like everyone to put in where they're joining us from. I already see Costa Rica, Connecticut, and Florida che uh, checking in. So tell us where you're joining us from, state, uh, uh, province, country, city, whatever it might be. I always love seeing how an international affair this is. So, and, and oh, they're starting to come in. Alaska, Texas, too quick to read. Italy, oh my goodness, Ohio, New Hampshire. Netherlands, Belgium, Tennessee, Boston, Georgia, South Africa. Wow, wonderful. Thank you all so much for joining. We're gonna have a great time today. And speaking of the chat, now uh, I mentioned we're gonna have a live Q&A at the end of today's session. So as you, uh, as you um, come up with those questions, uh, as, we, as Heather and I have our discussion, no need to hold on to those until the end of the, end of the session and I'll put them in at once. Go ahead and put them in uh, as they come to you and our moderator, Chris Dupps, will collect those and, uh, and we'll address those at the end of the presentation, okay? So with that said, I promised you some prizes, so. At the end of today's presentation, you'll be directed to fill out a quick little survey. It only takes take you about 25, 30 seconds. And you let us know how we did, what you'd like to see from us in the future. And you'll also have the opportunity to answer a trivia question based on today's presentation. And three uh, random winners, or excuse me, three w random uh, People who answered the trivia question correctly will win a prize package of a Printify hoodie, a pr personalized Printify mug, and $50 of Printify sales credit directly into your account. And Heather, you are also going to add a little bit of something to that, uh, to that prize package. What was that? Yes, I am adding in my niche playbook, which goes over the most profitable niches that I have personally sold in and what I recommend for new sellers to go into. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So uh, quite a robust prize package. Stick around to the end, you'll have a chance to win. And speaking of winning, uh, at two points in today's presentation, I'm gonna ask all of you to get out your Printify accounts and navigate, uh, clicking on that little green button in the upper right-hand corner of your Printify account. And from the drop-down menu, uh, select Payments, and then go down to where it says Coupons, because uh, two points, I'll be giving, away a, giving out a coupon code for you to put in. First person who puts it in correctly will instantly win $50 of Printify sales credit. Okay, now you won't see any bells and whistles saying, congratulations, you won. You'll either get the, uh, you'll either get the 50 bucks, or it'll say, this coupon doesn't exist, because we only, only made one. One of them. So if you are the winner, let us know in chat so we can all celebrate. And if you don't win, don't worry. There'll be two, there'll be two chances to win. Okay. All right. Well, now that all that's uh, uh, out of the way, I want to do one more thing and invite everybody watching, whether you're watching live or on repeat, to join me for a live Q&A session where you get to sit down with me. I do these 100% uh, free on Mondays and Wednesdays. Sit down. Uh, I love doing these. They're absolutely fun. They're, they're super fun for me because I get to talk and interact with you one-on-one -on -one and play a small part in your success by making you a more knowledgeable and more profitable print-on-demand seller. And we ha we're having a, a great time. We're doing store audits. We're doing uh, keyword research tutorials, uh, uh, dispelling some myths and talking about sales tips. So we're going to put that link into chat right now. Click on it. Reserve yourself a spot. Mondays or Wednesdays, 100% free. Sit down with me. I'd love to, I'd love to do whatever I can to make you uh, more profitable. Okay? All right. Well, 
Here we go, getting into Heather's story. This is what we're gonna cover today. We're gonna uh, hear all about how Heather got started, about her setting, uh, setting herself up for success, um, uh, how she found success with Printify, making those first sales, and uh, a little bit about those mistakes that she made along the way so you don't make those as well, and about growing the business once you start, uh, once you start making sales, how to scale up, that sort of thing, okay? And then of course, about how she likes to give back to the community, and, uh, and it, chances are, if you're you're out there surfing the uh, print-on-demand space on YouTube and Instagram and all those other spots, you've come across Heather. Let's go ahead and put Heather's uh, uh, links into, into the chat so you can follow her and, uh, and, and take advantage of all those pearls of wisdom that she shares online, okay? And of course, our live Q&A after that. Alrighty, well, Heather, I promised everyone Heather's story. So let's get in the Wayback Machine. Heather, tell us your story. How did it all begin? Yeah. So it began in 2020. I was working at a hospital as an MRI technologist. And during that time, I just graduated from college. I This was my first job ever. I was working for about a year, year and a half at this hospital. And once the pandemic happened, I my whole department imaging just got cut in hours. So uh, I was one of the people that was cut since I was one of the newer people in the hospital. So uh, gr I was so grateful I had a job though. <laughs> I want to preface that I was so grateful I had a job because I know a lot of people were laid off or lost their job entirely during this time. So when I was cut hours though, I did purchase a house at the exact same time that I was cut. And we all cut our hours by half most of the new people at the hospital um, since they were trying to give hours and uh, fund you know, nursing, which was completely understandable at that time. So during that time and place where I had a lot of bills to pay per month, I knew I needed to find a additional income stream. So I went online and I found a lot of YouTube videos talking about different side hustles. I remember there was drop shipping with Shopify, and then I came across Etsy and print on demand. It, drop shipping I looked into and I was like, eh, it's something about it just doesn't seem right for me. I looked more into print on demand and I saw a lot of people talking about their success stories with print on demand and Etsy. And it seemed very low risk. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go into this. So I tried in 2020. And during 2020, masks were in high demand, of course, during the pandemic. So I, I knew I was like, okay, I'm going to make masks and put them on Etsy with print on demand. There's a few print on demand uh, companies that sell them. Then I went into neck gaiters, but come to find out neck gaiters ended up not being widely accepted in most states and countries as a mask. So I, I sold a few of those when I initially began and I opened my Etsy shop with print on demand. Then production time slowed down a little bit with the companies I was using. I was not using Printify at that time. I was using a different company and production times was taking three to four weeks to ship out to a customer. And as a new Etsy store, it reviews are very, very important. I mean, they are vital to you growing on Etsy. And if you have your first initial reviews being one star or less than three star, that can really impact you. So I knew that starting out and I was just like, okay, this is a sign. This isn't for me. And my hours came back at the same time, the production times were really delayed. And I just thought, you know what, this is a sign, not for me. But so during 2020, I closed down my shop and during that time, I just remember I was so sad for some reason, even though I had my hours back, I was like, what's going on here? Why am I so sad with my career? I was just very discouraged. And I think it's because I got a taste of entrepreneurship with Etsy and Print On Demand. And I knew this was for me. I just knew I, I was like, this has to be the thing that, you know, is what I do uh, as far as getting, creating my own side hustle and starting a new business. So in 2021, I decided to reopen my shop and start completely new, not doing masks anymore because that that ship had sailed and people weren't buying masks as often. Also, neck gaiters, I couldn't sell anyways. So I was like, let me try t-shirts and apparel. So I uploaded, I want to say 100 listings within my first month on Etsy of just t-shirts in multiple niches 
in different seasonal niches and evergreen niches. And I didn't have any sales that month until the quite, quite honestly, maybe the last two days of the month I had one sale. And, um, I remember it was a Valentine's day t-shirt I sold, which was really cool. I just remember I woke up one morning and I heard the cha-ching from Etsy on my phone and I got up and I was like, what was that? And I looked at my phone and it was my first sale. Uh, and I thought I completely lost my opportunity to scale or even start on Etsy from dropping out of the game last year. I was like, okay, I'm reopening a shop. It's not going to work out and come to find out. I still had some momentum a little bit from that one sale. The next month, it was about 35 sales. The next month after that, I hit over 100 orders. And then by April, I was hitting over 500 orders uh, just from me continuously uploading listings onto my Etsy store in different niches and trying to diversify my niches. And by the end of that year, I earned 250K in revenue. Uh, last year, I earned over 180K in revenue. Right now, my shop's sitting at 450K, which is really, really awesome to say. And I ended up quitting my nine to five last year. So I stayed on part time at the hospital because I still, I didn't fully believe in this business being a full time thing until it kind of dawned on me. I was like, I'm making more than my job in healthcare, what am I doing? Like, why, why am I still working in healthcare, which I loved working in healthcare. I, I think I stayed on for so long, even after I was doing so well, just because I loved my job, I genuinely have a passion for helping people. And uh, I realized I could do that in a different way. And that's how I found it through YouTube is I'm able to give back in a different way, which is just tutorials and free help online now. So Wonderful. Well, congratulations on all your success. That's super awesome. And uh, being, able, being able to throw away the workaday world and become your own boss, that's a, that, that's a truly inspiring story that I think our audience is really going to be able to uh, uh, learn from today. And we're going to get into the uh, uh, all of the... Uh, 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 nuts and bolts of how she was able to do that and 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 uh, uh, and, and fully explore her story uh, as we go through today's presentation, but an absolutely wonderful and, and inspiring story. But so you mentioned uh, uh, getting yourself ready and sort of uh, um, finding your way to Printify, and I, I want to touch I want to touch on exactly how you made that journey to Printify and and why you, and why you've stuck there a little bit a little bit later. But let's talk about. Let's stay in that way back machine to 2021. And there's a lot of people in our audience right now that are in those same shoes. They are just starting out. So if you can uh, maybe tell us about laying that foundation by taking advantage of the wealth of information that's out there on YouTube, which you've already mentioned and, and in other spaces. Yeah, I think just starting out looking at, uh, this is what I did when I first began is I just, listen to what other experts on YouTube were saying. And it's, it's funny that th just the 180 that's happened that now I'm an expert, I guess, in this field. But when I first started, I remember people were like, Oh, upload a lot of listings. And, you know, they were like hundreds of listings, try different products, try different niches. And I kept hearing that. And I, I was like, it can't be that simple, right? I, I was like, there's no way. And then I did it. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to upload. I'm going to do what they say, upload hundreds of listings. So that's what I did. I, I uploaded 300, 400 listings within my first few months with Etsy. And it is a lot of repetition. It's kind of like working a muscle, you know, trying to grow some more biceps or something, you know? So that's what I did. And I put in those reps. I put in that daily grind and daily work in uploading listings and generally i just really uh listened and watched those youtube videos i followed tutorials i studied top etsy shops i think that's what's really important when you first start out is finding high demand uh, high search volume areas to go into on etsy the niches that are higher in demand the products that are higher in demand and seeing what designs are trending too i think just studying you know what's top of search on Etsy is one of the easiest ways to start. And then watching all the YouTube, you know, videos and things on the internet that's provided now, that's really awesome. Um, 
So. Yeah, that's and I, I, that's something I really want to get across to our audience here is how much you need to be a student of this game. Now, print on demand. I mean, if you look at it, it, it is rather simple. It's you know you upload a design, you publish a product, you collect uh, sales. Okay, but in that process, there's a lot of little stuff in between before and after, uh, b before and after those 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 steps that you really need to take in. And there is so much information out there. You could live ten lifetimes and not consume it all. You can get it right down to your to the specific products that you're offering, your sales channel, your niche. There's so and it's and it's all completely free. It's uh it's it's out there. A simple Google search will get you started. But y you mentioned it uh, earlier, niche. I mentioned it just now. How does one choose a niche? This is a question I get a lot of p people that are just starting out. What would you say? I think choosing your niche should start with maybe doing your field research on not only yourself, but your coworkers, your friends, your family. What gifts would you buy your friend? Just think of one friend right now and think, what do they like? And of course, I think the number one thing that comes up is maybe something that's pop culture related. Uh, I will say for anyone watching who's new to Etsy, be aware of trademarks and copyrights and all of the legal things that come with that as well. I know some people kind of go on the border of copyright infringement with, you know, like I think about my brother, for example, he loves Star Wars themed items, but I could not make something on Etsy that's Star Wars related, but I know he is a huge dog lover, you know, and um, that's something I would create for my brother. So think of those things that you would create necessarily for yourself, your loved ones, your friends, and then you can go from there and kind of branch out of those niches. Because if we're talking dog niche now, then what other types of niches are related or subcategories of those niches? So for me, I think, you know, I'd go into brainstorm mode, corgis, yorkies, <laughs> uh, doodles, you know, there's so many other niches out there underneath that umbrella of the dog niche. And I think that's what's really important when you're doing your research is going a little bit deeper so that you can target those specific audiences and get those high sale volumes maybe per week just from being very specific. Okay, and one other bit of advice that I give to people as they're starting out looking for that niche is to make yourself your own target customer. As you're learning the business, it uh, it, it would it would behoove you to. Um, Again, make yourself that target customer so that you already know the online spaces in which people that are into the same stuff you are are, are, are populating. You already know what's what sort of trending in those areas. You you would be have access to that information. So as you're learning the, as you're learning the game, think about yourself as the, as the target as as a target customer, and you're already one step ahead of the game. Then as you learn more, you branch out, and it, everything becomes much more. Everything just starts to make more. sense sense after a while. So that, that's absolutely wonderful advice. Thank you, Heather. Um, so great. So I'm doing my research. I'm learning the game. I've, I've decided on a niche. Uh, another one of the questions I get all the time is, what the heck do I sell? So if, if I'm just starting out and I want to know what to sell, what would you tell me? I would tell you the first place I always start is, of course, just at C search. So I just look up like, like we were saying, you chose that niche of the dog niche, let's say I would put uh, maybe gift or dog. I, I guess I would start with gift for dog and then let Etsy search suggest what's underneath it. Then I would click into that and then maybe I would look down the search. So generally speaking, there might be t-shirts that show up, maybe mugs, maybe uh, dog collars or dog bandanas. So generally speaking, I suggest people to first of all, kind of get out of what they'd initially go for to design for. I think the number one thing people think to des design for is t-shirts. And I try to urge people to kind of break out of t-shirts and maybe into other product types, just because you may have an easier time on Etsy by selling for a product that not many people are selling for. Um, one example, of course, is what I just said with dog bandanas or pet beds. I know there's pet beds on Printify. So 
you know, with Printify, there's hundreds of products you can design for that can separate your shop from the rest and be very different than the rest. So generally speaking, I know that's kind of like a vague answer to say, oh, look at gifts on Etsy. But I think that's the number one place I always like to encourage people to go is just to see the other products other people are selling. Then you have that market research already backing the next product you're going to create because you'll see, oh, a dog bandana or a pet bed is the top of the search. There is demand for it. And there's low competition because this is a different product that no one else is designing for. So that's generally where I like to start off. Okay. Yeah. And you hit the nail right on the head. Yes. Printify, we have, I think up to, we're, we're past 800 products now. And that's kind of what's cool about being a print on demand seller is that you have a, a print on demand seller with Printify is because you have access to this massive catalog of products that you can uh, just kind of try out because you don't have, it doesn't cost you anything to, you know, you don't have to fill a warehouse with this stuff in, in, in order to sell it. So you can try it out for your niche. Maybe a ice bucket and tongs for your niche is, 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 is going to work. There's only one way to find out. You got to try it. So you never know niche to niche if, if one of these products is going to take off. And you never know what's going to be popular in the zeitgeist. All of a sudden, fanny packs come back. Boom. And then you're selling fanny packs all day long. Okay. So it's nice to have those. It's nice to have that sort of flexibility. Okay. So great. Now, so now I know what to sell. Now, another one of the questions I get all the time is, well, what do I price my products? How do I know if I'm, I'm not cutting myself short or if I'm, or if I'm overpricing and, and driving sales away? Yeah. So as far as pricing, the really nice part of Printify that I absolutely love is that there is a way. So when you create your product, let's say you're like, okay, I know the niche dog niche. We're doing a pet bed and I have it created. And let's say the production fees is maybe, I don't know. I, I honestly didn't look at pet beds before this, but I assume maybe let's just say, let's just put a number on it. Maybe $20. There you go. Let's say. <laughs> So if we had a pet bed and you go on Printify on the product, when you go to edit the product and you scroll down to the pricing, you can add profit. So let's say you can edit pricing, select all the sizes. Let's say there's a few sizes of a pet bed. I guess a better example would have been the Bell and Canvas 3001 t-shirt because there's so many different colors. There's so many different sizes. So every production fee is going to be a little bit different depending on the size and the color of the t-shirt. So I like to price at a profit and stagger my prices based on the production fees. So I try to aim for $10 at the least. And if I can't, if $10 doesn't make sense for that product type, as far as profit goes on the back end of Printify, then generally I won't sell that product <laughs> or maybe I will uh, sell it, but I'll try to be competitive in a different way. Um, you know, maybe with my shipping or something like that. But generally speaking, I will add $10. So if it's a $20 pet bed, it will be $30 on my storefront just to factor in for any fees. And uh, like the Etsy transaction fee, that's 6.5%. The listing fee, relisting fee, that's about 40 cents there. Processing fee is point uh, or three percent so to factor that all in at least you're coming out with at the minimum a profit of five dollars i think that is good to start off with and to price low as you begin as a new etsy seller so you're competitive you get those initial sales and then i would increase my price as time goes on i would not keep it that low of profit um, of course you want to stay competitive but generally speaking, I like to start out lower. And that's what I like to recommend to new sellers too, just so you can be competitive. Okay. So whether you're selling the Bella Canvas 3001 or pet beds, it's important to know exactly where you stand in terms of the of the costs and you and you got to uh, ask yourself what are you looking to get out of this and it, like and, and like Heather said if you're just starting out well it makes sense to maybe uh, price it a little bit low just so you can build up that momentum build up those sales build up build up that reputation on Etsy and then as things get rolling increase a, a, as you go along but this is a great opportunity to plug uh, if I'm nothing if not a shameless self promoter a good opportunity for for me to plug our previous webinars on our YouTube channel on which you are watching this live webinar if you haven't subscribed subscribe now please hit the 
the hit the uh, hit the subscribe button. But uh, go back and check out our other webinars on uh, on our on our live tab. We did a whole webinar on pricing where we did deep dives into different pricing strategies, explore different pricing philosophies, pricing uh, at different times of the year. So if that's something that you uh, that you'd like to explore, please do that. And while you're there, check out our our other uh, our our other webinars that we have that we've done in the past. And we're going to be hitting you with webinars after webinar after webinar this this month. Next month, we're going to, excuse me, uh, next Thursday, a week from today, we'll be sitting down uh, and we'll be exploring everything you need to know about the Printify pop-up shop and Printify Connect, two of the most awesome features to come out of Printify in a long time and we have more coming but these are the but these are the two that we're going to that we're going to explore sit down with me a week from Thursday a week from today and then a week after that we'll be sitting down with Drew from Kittle Kittle is a design tool a very easy to use design tool and we'll be exploring exactly how you can create super simple uh, uh, super super awesome designs in a super simple way okay so webinar 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 be sure to tune in okay all right heather well let's get back to our little discussion here because I want to talk. I want to. I want to drill down on something that you mentioned earlier about publishing a, a whole bunch of listings. Now, I think this is super important for people that are just starting out. Now, if I'm, if I'm just setting out, uh, uh, what should my goal be for the first two months in terms of creating listings on Etsy? In the first two months, it's really important to lay that foundation for your Etsy shop. So generally, I recommend 100 listings at minimum in the first two months. And I know for a lot of new sellers, it's like, wow, that is a lot of listings within a short period of time. But one thing that this does is, first of all, it builds experience. I think that's one thing that I try to really prioritize is learning SEO, researching different niches. There are quite literally like hundreds to thousands of niches you can go into. So it's really important to expand your reach by going into those individual niches and uploading for multiple niches out of those 100 listings, rather than, you know, just doing a few listings and kind of hoping that people will find your listings with Etsy. There are hundreds to thousands of listings out there. So as a new Etsy shop, it's really hard to get visibility. And that's the second reason I recommend 100 listings when you first begin is to get that visibility and get some people into your listings, maybe some favorites within your first few months and hopefully a sale from just posting that many listings within those first two months. Sure, and, and just think about it from a beginner's perspective. You're gonna learn so much uh, by the time you get from listing number one, by the time you get all the way to listing 100. Imagine how much you learn in that process. And then as you move beyond 100, great. Well, now you've set, set yourself up for success and, you, and, you've, and, and you've at least learned that part of the game, okay? And like you said, it's a muscle. You need to exercise, okay? All right, well, wonderful. Now, I've created my listings. Now... A lot of the discussions I've been having in my live Q&A sessions, which I invite everybody to uh, join me for on Mondays and Wednesdays, uh, the 100% free, please come and join me, book your spot right now, um, is we talk about writing uh, uh, keywords and product descriptions. Can you tell me a little bit about, uh, the, about your philosophy about, writing, uh, about selecting keywords, writing good product descriptions, and maybe a little bit about long tail versus short tail keywords? Yeah, so I like to use both long tail and short tail keyword phrases in my product titles, in the tags, if I can fit it. For me personally, I like to go very narrow with my keywords. So instead of an uh, example of more of a broad area would be dog mom gift. And to me, that's a little bit broad. There's a lot of competition within those keywords. So instead of something like that, I would narrow it down to those subcategories and sub niches of the dog parent niche, maybe Corgi mom gift or Corgi mom t-shirt for her, something like that. That is a long tail keyword phrase. So generally speaking, I don't use as many short tail keyword phrases. I usually save those for my tags if I have anything left as far as character count goes and just amount of tags in my listing. So generally speaking, a short tail keyword example is two words or less. So if you put dog or mom gift or uh, dog gift, something like that along those lines, 
that's generally where I kind of stick away from now. I try to use those long tail keyword phrases just because customers are very specific now on who they want to or what they want to find in the Etsy search. Okay, and it's and, and it's important to uh, mention that um, these long tail and short tail keywords, as you build, as you add more more words to your to your uh, 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 keywords uh, past uh, past three words, that becomes a long tail keyword. And you can do this kind of uh, investigation and research using a keyword research tool. There's a million of them out there, like eRank, uh, that offer a, a free version or at least a, f a free trial version. You can try them out and see which one works best for you. Um, but as you're doing that research, you'll be able to use some tools like that to sort of really narrow down down your focus and build a really good listing. Okay, and uh, and and we do a lot of that in in our in the uh, live Q and A sessions. That that, that that I am I am lucky enough to host. So please join me for those. Okay, but great. So um, I've done all that, but I want to touch back on what you something you mentioned a little bit earlier about how you were using different print on demand solutions, and then you found your way to Printify. I want to know exactly how you found your way to Printify and why you've stuck with us ever since. Yeah. So I the other company I was using, I will I will not name for just. Life Thank purposes, you. but uh, <laughs> the other company I was using, I had just a few issues. First of all, it was the production. Second of all, the production fees and the costs. Third of all was the customer service. I just had a lot of problems with the other company I was using. And I started picking up in order volumes where I was getting hundreds of orders per month that I was realizing I was losing thousands of dollars just because the production fees were higher with the other print on demand company. So I was just like, you know what, I have to, I'm going to move over to Printify. I'm just going to move all of my designs over. So I eventually did that. And I was able to do the Printify premium, which was really beneficial. I mean, it knocked off a few dollars off the production fees. And over time, that was thousands of dollars I was getting back for my business that I could reinvest into my business add new listings with, and then also just keep his profit. That was really nice and a huge plus of that. So that's kind of how I went over to Printify. I was a little bit, you know, hesitant to move over because I was like, oh man, I have hundreds of listings already on with this other company. And I'm really happy that I eventually switched over because again, a lot, a lot of profit was kept by making that move. So Good. And that's one of the pro promises we make to merchants like you and to everyone out there listening is that we want to be able to uh, make you as profitable as possible, because if you can't make any money, then this whole thing falls apart. So that's that's one of the pillars on which uh, on which Printify is is built. And um, you mentioned something about transferring over those over those products. Well, for any of you out there listening that have an existing business with uh, an, a competing uh, print on demand uh, company that we will not name, uh, that uh, we actually we actually have a product transfer service that we can that we can uh, uh, direct you to and we're going to go ahead and pop that into the chat but just know we'll do all the heavy listing and recreate those listings for you it's part of it's again part of our our commitment to your success and like heather said people come over to us because of the pricing and they stay because of the service because we offer um because we offer things like the product transfer and the printify premium where you get the instant 20 percent discount on every single product and you access to webinars like this and cool videos on our youtube channel subscribe and also um i want to i just want to do a quick plug for our podcast series that is launching today where you can where you can uh, sit where uh, successful print on demand merchants sit down with a printify's very own Talish and you can uh, it's called printing with profits you can get those uh, you can it's available on Spotify on Apple podcasts and on Google and then it, soon it will exist on our YouTube channel in video format um, and when you check those out be sure to subscribe but printing profits with Talish Heather I believe you made an appearance and we're all and we're all going to be and we're all looking forward to uh, to the day when that goes live as well. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about making that first sale. Great. I've got my listings. I know my products. I've selected my niche. How do I make that first sale? How do I get over that first little hump and hear that cha-ching on my phone? Yeah. So there's a few ways that I recommend generally getting that first sale. One way is social media. I know that is a scary answer in itself for a lot of people because generally speaking, when you start your own business, it's like, oh, I don't want to tell my friends or people 
from high school I have on Facebook that I have this business and I'm trying it out or even creating a new social media or something like that to get people into your listings and purchasing. That is what's really important when you first begin is that initial sale. So sometimes using social media can really boost it or, or boost your likelihood of getting that first sale. The other way is just waiting organically, uploading, keeping uploading listings over time and waiting until you get that first organic sale. Sometimes it takes a while with that route. So I don't generally recommend that. I recommend doing social media of some sort, maybe Instagram, maybe Facebook. You can always open up a business Instagram, which allows you to have a link uh, on your bio. I know certain platforms, you're not allowed to have a link in the bio. I think TikTok, you have to have around 1000 followers, something like that in order to have that link. So Instagram's where I recommend. So when people find you on Instagram, they can click into that business link, go to your Etsy shop. And that is a huge boost in the Etsy algorithm. As you get more sales, maybe from outside sources into Etsy, Etsy really rewards those shops that get outside visitors into Etsy. So that is a huge plus. And that's why I recommend doing social media. You may see bestsellers on Etsy. I've seen this time and time again on Etsy where I am doing my market research and I see a bestseller that has terrible SEO. I mean, not, not to be an SEO hater here, but I remember I saw one listing that just said, it was like teacher t-shirt. And I, I was like, how is this getting clicks? How is this a bestseller? Come to find out, I click into their listing. I click into their shop they have a huge social media following. So they're a bestseller, they're ranking organically. So just as a little boost for social media there, but the other way would be just ads. So running Etsy ads is a really great way to get that first sale. I've seen many shops who've done $5 a day Etsy ads. Maybe they do the highest amount of the budget that they can for their first week or few weeks to get that first sale. Generally speaking, if you run the Etsy ads and you try it out, they don't always spend all of your budget. Sometimes it's only a half of the budget or one fifth of the budget I've seen, at least in my own shop um, from experience. So having those Etsy ads running, again, getting that visibility, it usually, it, if we're talking conversion rates, average e-commerce conversion rates are 2% across e-commerce. So you need 100 visitors usually, or I guess 50 visitors to even get one sale if that's the average e-commerce conversion rate. And generally speaking, as a new Etsy shop, if you're trying to just get visibility through posting listings over and over and over again, I know when I first began, it was not even 10 visits or views a day on my store. So hence why I think social media would be one route to go, maybe asking friends or family if, what would they like to buy? And then sending them the listing, maybe creating that item for them and getting that first initial sale too can help. Okay. Yeah. Uh, leveraging the power of social media. Great advice. I wish I had the access to social media when I got started in e-commerce way back in the nineties. I know I'm showing my age, but, uh, but yeah, if you're not, if you're not taking advantage of it, uh, if you're not taking advantage of it, you're really not doing yourself any favors. Um, and yes, Etsy wants to make money. So if, if you're the kind of seller that can pull people from off the platform onto Etsy, well, then they're going to be, they're going to, they're going to boost your listings. Cause uh, I mean, if it, it because what it's, uh, it's, 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 you're bringing in new customers. So why wouldn't they, why, why wouldn't they put, push your listings? Okay. But all right. Well, I promised everybody a chance to win some money and I am a, nothing if not a man of my word. So I'm going to ask everyone to get out their Printify accounts and pull out, excuse me, and uh, <laughs> click on that little green button on the upper right hand corner and from the drop down menu, select payments and then go down to where it says coupons and get ready to enter today's first coupon code. Now, if you're entering it into the chat, uh, into the YouTube chat, you're doing it wrong. You need to do it in your Printify account, okay? So, uh, and one person will be the lucky winner of $50 of Printify sales credit. If you are the lucky winner, let us know in chat. Again, you're not gonna see any bells and whistles saying, congratulations, you won, or sorry, you lose. You'll either get the money or you'll, or you'll see a little notice that says coupon doesn't exist because there's only one lucky winner. But good news is you'll have another chance to win here in just a little bit. So, without further delay, today's first coupon code is... We love Heather. 
And we certainly do love Heather. It's all one word written like this. Good luck. Congratulations to the winner. Again, let us know in chat so we can all celebrate. Okay? <laughs> and you will have one more chance to win. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of those mistakes you made along the way, just so we can tell the folks out there not to make those same mistakes. So if, if you wouldn't mind, just let us know a little bit uh, of some of the pitfalls to avoid. Yeah. So my, I have two. So one pitfall to avoid is first of all, posting your Printify or pushing your products from the Printify backend to your Etsy storefront and just leaving your listing there without filling in SEO tags, uh, your title description and your mock-up photos, maybe your mock-up photo cards that have a size chart, color chart. Generally speaking, if you upload a listing and maybe you're like, you know what, I'm going to go back to it in a few days. I, I can't complete it today. When I began, I did that quite often where I would upload listing upon listing and I'd just give it a week and then I'd go back to the listing. I'd edit the SEO, make it a final package deal for any customer that would potentially find it. Over time, I realized that those listings were not taking off as fast as the listings that I did all in one sitting. And one of the reasons why is because Etsy's algorithm starts ranking your listings immediately once you publish them from the Printify backend. So if you publish an item and it's just a listing without SEO, without your tags filled out, and there's not many images maybe on the listing or size chart, color chart, what have you, then the listing tends to not rank because people aren't clicking on it, they're going past it, and then you just end up in the last page of the search. So it's really important to have that full package deal when you first start out. The second big mistake that I made when I began is I designed quite a bit and I remember I would take my phone and I would put so many ideas and phrases in my notes app of my phone. And then I'd create a bunch of designs, but I wouldn't put them on Printify, I wouldn't publish them, I wouldn't, they would just be in my drafts. So this was my biggest, one of my biggest mistakes, because since it laid in drafts, when I finally published some of the listings that I thought wouldn't sell, those ended up being my best sellers or the ones that just sold consistently and organically, which was really surprising to see. So if you have anything in your drafts, for those that are watching, definitely try to post those, even if you think they're hideous or bad designs. I thought that with my first bestseller, my first bestseller design was in my drafts. And I finally posted it and published it to my storefront. And it took off like it within the first month, I started getting sales on it. And I was just like, what's going on here? I, I was like, I wasn't even going to post this design on this product. And now it's going like crazy on the Etsy uh, search. I, I started getting favorites, then sales, then daily sales. And then it became my first bestseller. I got the bestseller badge. And if I had not posted that, then I would have never had my first bestseller or maybe just that, that as my first bestseller. But uh, just uh, learn from my mistakes and try to post the things that you may think feel may not rank on Etsy because you will be surprised what sells as far as your designs and your products go. Sure. Have confidence in yourself. Have confidence in your customer out there. You never know what's, what's going to catch fire. And in the process of making those 100 listings, put them, put them out there. You just never know what's, what's going to catch fire. And you heard it from, from Heather here. And that's why I love these conversations so much. So we get to sit down with successful merchants. We get to hear about all the stuff they did right, some of the stuff they did wrong, and so that you can learn from it and make yourself, uh, and so that you can get yourself from A to B a lot quicker without taking all those, all those missed turns in the middle. So that's that's absolutely wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Um, great. So I've made some sales. Uh, things are going good. Um, after, after I get that first taste of success, now, how do I take it to the next level? What did you do? So I scaled out what was selling. So maybe if that first sale did really well, then I would look at that item and look at the design. Maybe it's that specific design just really works with 
this one niche. So I would scale it out to those sub niches. So, or related niche categories. So let's say it was, again, going back to the dog niche. I love giving that as an example, just because there's so many different types of dogs and so many different types of dog parents. You know, there's dog moms, dog dads, uh, dog grandmas, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you never know with all the niches that surround that one niche. But then you can go into the corgi dad niche, corgi mom niche. Those are separate niches you can make a design for on a t-shirt. So that's generally where I would suggest going next is what is working is what you should capitalize on and really scale out from that one for sale, because that's a really great indicator that that design really works. So I would take that design, make it into more of a template, so to speak, where you just plug and play phrases into that one design that sold. And you know that product sells with that design too now. So I would take that product, do the same thing, and then maybe scale it out to different products. A lot of the times, certain design styles can be scaled out to so many different products. So if uh, t-shirts, for example, usually designs you do for t-shirts, you can put on a mug, you can put on a tumbler, you can put on, um, you know, like a sweatshirt, a hoodie. There's just so many other places that you can take that one design. And a lot of people, surprisingly, uh, I've had many messages on Etsy of people asking me to take one design to other products. And I never thought to go into those products. I was like, oh, a long sleeve shirt. I, you know, one of my best sellers was a t-shirt and people were asking for it in long sleeve version or a hoodie or a, a Gildan 18,000 crew neck sweatshirt. And I was like, why have I never thought about this? And then I eventually started doing that. And that's what scaled my business further. So, okay. So basically I identify what works and listen to your customers and make them happy. And what I like, what, what I like yeah. to tell people in terms of reaching that next level is, is once you have one Etsy shop humming and 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 you've and you and you know the business, you know the keywords, you know how to you know how to provide that excellent customer service. Well, what you do is you take that successful business model that you've built and then create another Etsy store and go into a, a different niche, or take what you're doing on Etsy and open up a Shopify or Wix store, or take it onto eBay, whatever it might be, and just sort of replicate this, making the minor tweaks that you have to, depending on sales channel and uh, and, and particular niche, and there you start to grow your print-on-demand empire, and you can manage it all conveniently from one Printify account. So no, no need to subscribe for a whole bunch of different Printify premiums. If you've subscribed to one Printify premium, it, it applies to every single store underneath your Printify account, okay? Yes. Wonderful, well thank you for sharing. I wanna end uh, today's conversation um, with uh, a little bit of uh, uh, Touching back on what you mentioned earlier about being part of this community, how you went from uh, uh, seeking the advice of experts to being an expert yourself. Why do you feel it's so important to, uh, to be a, a voice in this community? Yeah, um, I feel like this is something I never really thought about when I was working in healthcare is... And I think the pandemic really shook a lot of people as well Is that one income stream is just never... Uh, it's not as stable as we may have thought it was because of the pandemic and so many people losing their jobs and getting cut hours that I think it, it, it really resonated with me with so many coworkers that lost their jobs and so many family and friends that lost their jobs that I really developed this, like, I guess, passion to really teach and help others to have more stability in their income. And that could be through a side hustle, maybe a side income, or maybe like me where that side hustle turned into a main income stream. I didn't, I never thought that was possible. So um, that's generally why I make all these YouTube videos and all these TikToks and Instagram, because I want other people to have that stability in their life by having that additional income stream. And again, that goes back to healthcare. I genuinely care about others and others doing well in life. And I, I just want to give back in some way. And it, it's just really cool being on the YouTube platform. By the way, I'm Heather Studio on YouTube. If I, I'm sure they linked it as well. But um, it, it's been really cool to be able to reach so many people through that now. 
Wonderful. So. Well, thank you. That that caring really comes through, and I, I think I think your story that that you told today is going to resonate across our community. So thank you very much for for uh, sharing your time with us. If we can put in yeah. Heather's uh, socials into into the chat uh, again, that would be super helpful. And if you're watching this on replay, you'll find all that information in the in the description as well. Okay. Um, but. Um, I promised everybody a chance to win some money uh, for a second time. And again, I'm not, I'm, I am a man of my word. So I'm gonna ask you to get out your Printify accounts one more time before we get to the uh, Q&A uh, uh, portion of today's webinar. So right now, little green button, upper right hand side uh, of your Printify <laughs> dashboard. Uh, go down to where it says payments, click on that, and then scroll down to where it says coupon and prepare to enter today's second Coupon code for an instant $50 of Printify sales credit into your Printify account. Again, you're not going to see bells and whistles if you win or lose. It's just going to, you're either going to get the money or, or not. And I want to give a shout out to Kim, Kim Acost or, or Acosti, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, who uh, let us know in chat that she was the winner of, of the first round. So if you win this round, let us know in the chat so we can, so we can celebrate. Okay. All right. Our second coupon code of the day is. YouTube subscribe, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our past webinars, all our future, all our future and past videos. Super helpful information. It goes along with what about earlier becoming a student of this uh, of this of this industry. Tons of stuff for you to learn on our platform uh, in several different ways. Um, not to mention our podcast, which is going live today with uh, with Talish from Printify, where he sits down with successful merchants like Heather. Heather's going to make an appearance on our podcast. It's called Printing Profits. It's available on Spotify, Apple, and Google, wherever you consume your, your favorite podcasts, you can find Printing Profits. Do yourself a favor when you're at the gym, pop in the headphones and uh, become a more knowledgeable, more profitable print-on-demand seller. Okay? All right. So if you uh, are the winner, please put it into the chat. Let's see if uh, anyone has told us that they won yet. Nope, a few people didn't win. Sorry, Larry Gray, you didn't win, but good luck next time. Um, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. Darian Moore did not win again, but thank you for trying. Okay, but let us know. Um, I promised you uh, uh, an opportunity to ask us some questions, but before we get there, I want to invite everybody one more time to, to join me for a live Q&A session that I do where you can sit down with me on Mondays and Wednesdays, 100% free. We can talk about anything you want. We can take the, I, I love uh, I love these sessions because I never know where the conversation is going to go. One time we spent uh, almost 40 minutes just talking about mugs and the theory on selling mugs and the different mugs that we have and what sells and, 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 in, and in what quantity, the packaging and stuff like that. So we do deep dives on different subjects. We do store audits. People send me their links. We go through their store live during the chat, tell them what's working, what you need to fix. We do some keyword research using my E-Rank account. So we have a lot of fun. Whatever it is you want to talk about, or if you just want to sit with your, with your headphones in while you work and, and pretend like you're working, we promise we won't tell on you. But please join me Mondays, Wednesdays, 100% free. That link is going in right now. So book yourself a spot. All right. Well, live Q&A. All right. Let me pull up my questions here, folks. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining and for submitting your questions. Uh, and thank you to our moderator, Christos, for, for uh, uh, compiling all those. Okay, um, but uh, stay tuned after our live Q and A because we'll be giving out the link to our survey where you'll be uh, where you'll be asked to answer a trivia question based on today's presentation for another chance for three lucky winners to answer, that answer the trivia question correctly to win a prize package of a uh, Printify Webinars hoodie, a personalized Printify Webinars mug, $50 of Printify sales credit, and then uh, Heather, what was the prize you were adding to the package? The niche playbook. Yep. Excellent. So the niche playbook help you get to help you to find that niche that that works for you. All those prizes will be uh, will be given away to three lucky winners at the end of today's presentation. Okay. All right. But the, today's first question uh, for Heather and myself is comes from Jim Merck. Thank you very much for joining us today, Jim. Um, big question. He says I have a product with thirty favorites and one sale. How do I get more sales from the favorites? What say you, Heather? So the coupons are probably your best bet to bring those favorites in. So I would look at your coupon section in your Etsy shop to make sure that the coupons are turned on for favorites, abandoned cart, and then also post-purchase. So generally that's under their marketing uh, column on Etsy. So 
Well, there you go. Get to work on that right away, Jim. Hopefully we can get some of the, turn some of those favorites, convert them into sales. Thank you for your question. Uh, the next question comes from Ellen Maxfield Nagel. Thank you, Ellen, for, uh, for submitting a question. Um, we would love to know how you schedule your week. How much time for research? How much time set aside for design? How much time to post listings? How much time did you spend initially in hours per week? Generally speaking, I spend, I would say three, three to 10 hours a week on my Etsy business. Honestly, it's been a little bit less the past year just due to, I, I mean, Printify takes care of a lot of the work for you, your job. But once you have your store built up, it generally is a lot less time commitment, at least for me. And so I guess there's a two-part answer to this question. So when I first started, it was not like that by any means. I don't want to lead anyone astray because when I first began, it was closer to 10 to 20 hours because I was researching, I was listing, I was really learning. Again, I was watching YouTube videos. I was watching um, or, or studying other shops. I was doing my research in niches and products and how to price, how to compete on Etsy, how to market even better than I already was. And that's how I really scaled up my business. But that took about 10, 20 hours a week, sometimes up to 30 hours a week when I began. And I would say that was the first few months. Then I scaled back my listing and I was just maintaining. So I would upload some listings here or there. And it was probably only three to five hours of maintenance work because I was working full time as a healthcare worker that first year in 2021. And it wasn't until November of 2021 when things got way too chaotic with customer service on my Etsy shop that I said, hey, you know what, I'm going to dial it back and uh, dial it back in my healthcare job. So I went down to part time in November. But during that time, um, like I said, it was probably three to five hours, maybe up to 10 hours of customer service a week. And I was not listing at that time. Now, the past year, last year, Every week I was spending maybe three to five hours total per week. So, and really it's just, you know, doing customer service mainly, answering messages, fixing order issues when they come through. But it's really nice because Printify makes it so quick. Like I just send out a uh, customer service request in under a minute. And uh, speaking about the company I've dealt with prior I would spend hours just trying to, I mean, I remember that maybe that's me being a little bit over dramatic, but <laughs> in total, like it took 30 minutes to an hour just to get a response from this other company and get my issue taken care of. And I was a high volume Etsy seller. I was, it, it's kind of tough when you have a lot of problems. So anyways, that's just me on my little, little box for a moment, but that's how many hours it takes now is about three to five hours a week. It's very low maintenance. Well, there you go, Ellen. There's the answer to your question. In the, in the beginning, yeah, you're going to have to put in some hours, but the uh, reward is there. Once you get everything up and running and humming, then it's all about maintenance and you have a, will have a lot more free time on your hand than, than you would uh, doing your 40 hour a week full time job. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Heather. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, the next question comes from Rachel. Rachel asks, do you suggest a store having limited items, for example, only shirts and tanks, or can a store with a variety of products be successful as well? I don't want my store to look cluttered. I would suggest a variety of items. If you're selling on Etsy specifically, I would always have a variety of niches, variety of items and product types. One of the reasons being is just because Etsy usually pushes your listings by themselves, not your store. So let's say you're a mug shop, Etsy won't push you in the algorithm due to that you're a mug shop, they're only going to push that listing that's selling. So having a variety of items is completely okay. I understand the issue of thinking that it looks cluttered, but generally speaking, a lot of top shops on Etsy have over five to 10 product types within their shop. So it is possible to have a variety store and I usually recommend doing that. Okay, great. Thank you for your question, Rachel. And since you did mention tank tops in there, I just want to pop in a nugget from the for, from an industry perspective here. Tank top sales will rise as, as soon as the winter is over, as the temperature increases, and it will rise. But it will uh, tank top sales will peak 
uh, around mid-June to uh, mid to late June. So if you see your tank top sales dip after that into the summer, uh, that's completely normal because people need them uh, at the beginning of the summer. Once they have their tank tops, well, then they don't need to buy anymore. So if you're selling tank tops, just to note that, uh, that that is completely normal, okay? All right, moving on. Angela, Angela J asks, um, uh, trademark question number one, do you search for each word or the whole phrase? Uh, for example, super dad is trademark, but what if that, what if that was a phrase like super dad, my real life superhero trademark? Okay. Uh, there's, there's, there's two questions. So we'll, so we'll do the, the first one. Okay. Trademarked. Ho do you search for the whole phrase or the whole phrase? Like, do you search for each word of the whole phrase? For example, super dad is trademark, but what if that, what, what if that was in a phrase like super dad, my real life superhero? There we go. Yeah. So first of all, I do want to preface, I am no, by no means a legal expert or professional as far as I've searched on USPTO.gov is I've just searched the full phrase. So generally speaking, if a phrase is trademarked, I won't, I won't go anywhere close to a phrase that's trademarked, but that's just me personally. I uh, usually three strikes with Etsy as far as copyright, you're out. So they will suspend or ban you. So I don't, play anywhere close to, even if it's a phrase and part of the phrase, I just don't post for it, but that's my comfortable standards. I know people who really go on the border of that and that's okay too. But personally, I don't, I don't try to go near copyrighted things. Good. And I'm, I'm going to second that notion there, Heather, because um, when it comes to copyrights, especially on Etsy, you want to play it super safe. If for whatever reason they shut you down, that's it. Okay, Co using copyright designs is a short-term strategy for success. It has no long-term potential. And uh, also, not only uh, copyrighted uh, uh, images, but also stealing your competition's designs, that also, that also never works out well. You're much better off coming up with, with your own designs and staying away from copyrights altogether. Okay, all right, let's move on. Aaron's question. Aaron Collette had a question. Uh, one of your questions is, is that I'm worried about the cost of the items and including shipping. So can I offer free shipping and, uh, and how it further increases the cost? What is the revenue bracket to shoot for? So free shipping, do you offer it? Do you suggest it? What's, what's your take on that? So I always say that I have maybe a polarizing view on shipping, but to me, I think that the shipping does not necessarily matter. And this is my theory because I, so I have my shop that has no free shipping and I have a friend's shop who does pretty much close to the same revenue as me and they have free shipping and we both get the same daily orders and we're both in very similar product types. So that's something to think about that I, I, I think it comes down to your product, your design, your niche. I will say e from my experience, I, I've seen that people don't necessarily pay that much attention to shipping. Like customers don't when they're looking on the Etsy search. I haven't noticed as many people really pay attention. It's kind of they're looking for the lowest price first on Etsy, and then they'll look at the free shipping, and then they might go back and forth between listings and be like, oh, you know what? This is the same price as the item that has the free shipping versus the item that doesn't have the free shipping. So I think the customers are very uh, intelligent, you know, when they're shopping, they're seeing that they're like, okay, it doesn't matter if it's free shipping or not free shipping, it's still going to be the same price. But for me personally, in my shop, I don't offer free shipping. Um, and that's just how I've been rolling. Even if the shipping's $8, I still have people purchasing. So Okay, well, you heard it here. Um, we got time for one more question, um, and uh, apologies if we didn't get a chance to answer your questions today. We're a little bit over time, but we're going to do one more before we say goodbye to Heather today, okay? Um, this one comes from Richard and Carrie. Thank you so much for joining us, Richard and Carrie. Um, they ask, uh, some people have said that if too many products are added at once, then Etsy will mark you as spam and suspend your account. Uh, advice regarding this issue, please, Heather. So... I, I feel like Etsy has suspended people for all the reasons, just so many different reasons outside of just that too. Uh, I know some people they've suspended due to payment not being synced or your bank account and your bank deposit 
account not being synced correctly on your Etsy shop. So sometimes it could be that. Or maybe it might just be, again, you're chirping that wire for uploading high volumes of listings, but it's not confirmed. I've I've kind of went back and forth on this. I've heard that if you have a shop that's been open for a really long time and you upload high volumes of listings, I've heard people who have had their shop open for a while usually don't get suspended. It's when you open up your shop, then you upload a lot. Sometimes that trips the Etsy algorithm wire. But Again, this isn't confirmed or denied from the actual, you know, company of Etsy. So I would love to hear kind of what they say on that as well. But that's just what I suspect is if you've had an Etsy shop open, generally speaking, you're more safer off. But still, after you kind of hit that trip, the Etsy algorithm wire, so to speak, what I've noticed is once they unsuspend your shop, you don't have a problem going forward. I had my shop suspended uh, for that reason, and they just said, "Oh, sorry, it was a, it was a bug," and then I never got suspended ever again after that. So I would, I would just say there, there is the bright side of that that if you are suspended, usually it takes two weeks to three weeks until you're unsuspended, but after that, you shouldn't be suspended again. But again, I don't work for. Etsy, I wish, I, I sometimes wish I did just to like know the, the back end. So <laughs> right on. Okay. Well, thank you yeah. very much for that, Heather. Um, wow. And thank you everyone for joining and for submitting questions and to the winners that uh, of the, of the coupon code challenge. That was super awesome. Congratulations. Uh, Heather, this was great. Um, I think everybody that tuned in uh, either live or is watching our replay really got a masterclass in just about an hour. So thank you so much for sharing your time with us. If you liked what you saw from Heather, well, you can follow her on her socials we'll have those in we will have those into the chat and they'll also be in the description so you can continue your journey with heather from heather x studios um but uh and also you can uh join us here for more webinars next week we'll be uh, a week from today we'll be sitting down and discussing everything about the printify pop-up store if you haven't heard about it yet it's a super awesome store that's 100 free that we give you here at printify just by being a printify merchant and i'll tell i'll tell i'll tell you all about how to use it and answer all your questions and we'll also talk about printify connect where we'll take over uh, we'll take over as your as your customer service uh, customer service provider and again take one uh, one part of that uh, uh, time consuming uh, time consuming aspect out of your out of your day so join me next week for that and then the week after we'll be sitting down with drew from Kittle Kittle is a uh, design tool super super easy to use so you can create super cool designs upload make your hundred hundred listings and get yourself going on Etsy just like Heather said okay wonderful all right well, we're going to say goodbye, but I believe we've already put into the chat the link to our survey. Click on that, answer today's trivia question, we win, uh, win the prizes, where uh, three lucky people who answer today's trivia question correctly will be selected to win the prizes. I'll reach out to you myself. Join me for my live Q&A sessions. Follow Heather on, on social media. Thank you so much for joining us, and I'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.